how did the documentary first come about? Were you approached, or was it your idea to do it? It was our idea. It was our idea, yeah. And um, been working on it for uh, quite a few years, and then uh, we'd been gathering the material, and then we found George Henkin, the director, and then um, when we decided on her as a good idea, we left her alone, really, uh, because we wanted her to make the film, and we didn't want to sort of pick away at it and um, end up Pretty with something brave a bit thing muted. to do, really. That was going to be my next question, because yeah. it's pretty honest. I mean, how, I was going to ask how involved you've kind of been with the, the general direction of the film in the days. Well, we weren't. So. We just weren't, yeah. I mean, all the material. We and just spoke to George for hours. Found the, the, the best story that she thought was the most interesting. And I mean, she had long, long, I mean, long hours of conversations with us. So she got everyone's perspective of how they felt about the band, the breakup, the beginning, the middle, and everything. And uh, so from that, she then kind of put the film together. Our brief to her really was archive only, political context and uh, and that was it. Yeah I think if we were involved in it it would have just been another piece of spanned up Sanitized, propaganda. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so <laughs> it was the best way of there's a lot of archive footage there. Were you involved in kind of collating all of that? Or was some that of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, some of it was home movie stuff, yeah. you know, yeah. a, a shot by Martin or Steve or Gary, you know, over the years. Um, so that was, that was very much in the house. And other stuff that was discovered, like the HMS Belfast footage, the New York first show footage, we, n none of us had ever seen that. It was only discovered literally in the last year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we employed someone for a couple of years uh, to, to collate it. Uh, from around the world, from all the TV companies that owned various stuff, you know. so that that was um, yeah, and then then just hunting it down, detective work. Mm. How does it feel, kind of watching all this stuff back now, especially the stuff you didn't know exists or haven't seen? I mean, what what kind of feels? Well, some of it's lovely. I mean, some of it's you know it's delightful to see yourself and everything else, and other bits are really painful. So, I mean, generally speaking, I mean it, it's I mean seeing the Blitz stuff, seeing London back in the sixties, <coughs> the punk thing. That's amazing. Seeing the band having a right good laugh is all, all good stuff. Some of the live footage. Um, and yeah. the live footage. But there's, um, there are a lot of people in there that are no longer with us. I, I find that you know, hard to watch. Some are and with then, us and that's a shame. That's <laughs> 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 another story. But, but, you know, and then, but then I think when you see the slow disintegration of the band, that, that's, a, that's a toughie. I don't like really watching also, that. Also, it's a strange thing. I mean, personally, I always find that when I'm watching something of, of myself and the others that is so far away, yeah. it becomes like you can watch it almost in, in as a third person, you know, you can watch it kind of from an outsider's point of view, and so you get a better, a better perspective of the whole story. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to see where, where you are now as an individual, because you know, I look back at some of that footage of me, and that's not a person that I recognise as being yeah. me now, you know, so I think we're, we're all grown change, since then. Yeah. Um, so moving on to the greatest hits, um, how did you go about selecting the, the tracks and the running order and things like that? I mean, really well, running order is, is, is uh, especially on the first side, is, is all chronological. Uh, I mean, I really wanted to start with the new Spandau songs at the beginning, but the record company were adamant that that, that, couldn't, mm -hmm. that couldn't happen, that they had to be at the end of side one. But, um, so I mean, it's tricky because yeah. because um, what people tend to do these days is they put their best tracks, what they consider their best tracks, right at the front because people normally go to that and uh, and they cherry pick but um, you know it's kind of well, what was our best tracks you know so it's, it's a nice position to be in where, where you've just got a whole load of 20 20 top 20 hints or whatever and uh, just shuffling the order but we wanted to put in some stuff that people weren't aware of b-sides more obscure tracks give people an idea of what we were up to who didn't know the band's history pre to true pre -to -true, the day that was <coughs> The, fil the, the yeah. stuff on, st mm. on the second disc is, is the stuff that's in the film, mm. and the mm. stuff that George picked for the film that was, maybe wouldn't be stuff that we picked. You know? okay. well, we're hoping have... people will like the album so much they'll get to the end and play the new stuff as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the. Do you say our favourites are they the same as they used to be, or does that change over time? Uh, I like him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't realise. Yeah. The songs. Yeah, we've all got favourites. Through the barricades yeah. is mine. Every time, well documented. I love that song. I think we're sort of vibing on the new stuff at the moment. Yeah. It? It's, it's been yeah. been nice to get new material out. Yeah. 